Hey Merfolk fans, I'm Joe. Thanks very much for joining me today. If you'd like to support my channel, please check out the link above to my Patreon page. I'm here with a replay of round 5 of a Modern League. I was 4-0 and at this point, having defeated Sultai Ninjas, Hogak Vine, um, Devoted Company, and Boros Burn. Uh, Force of Negation was cast in each of the, the matchups so far. Um, Waterlogged Grove not featuring as prominently, though contributing mana and getting cycled in at least one circumstance. So, uh, felt pretty good going into this final round. Uh, the, I finally lost a die roll, and uh, so the opponent was on the play, but this is a beautiful hand. Uh, three lands with some card draw and some protection against broken stuff with Force of Negation. So the opponent mulliganed to six, um, then they chose to mulligan to five, and then down to four. So I was pretty ecstatic at this point since um, opportunities to go five and zero oh online uh, don't come around every day. Opponent mulliganing to four means I have that much better of a shot. To start with Wooded Foothills, they don't crack it. Uh, I guess they're trying to draw into some more lands. Waterlog Grove, uh, decent as a fourth land. Uh, if we continue drawing lands, then uh, it's solid as you know an option that I can cycle. Pass back to the opponent. Uh, I, well, I guess they're cracking their Wooded Foothills now. Um, if they were looking for lands, they probably wouldn't have cracked it. So, um, so they were looking for lands. Because they didn't have a second land drop, but they cracked the Wood Foothills anyway. So maybe not the most sophisticated opponent, even though they were in the 4-0 bracket here. Draw a card off Silvergill Adept, and it is that fifth land, so in, you know, we might end up cycling this waterlogged grove. Faithless Looting. All right, so, so this is probably Dredge, and this is an excellent opportunity to use Force of Negation. Um, these... Next turn, I'm going to be able to play out a Benthic Biomancer and a Lord, so I pitched one of the other Lords. Uh, opponent said, uh, how rude, I think, in response to that. And I could feel for the guy, since he mulliganed to four, and then I countered his one mana play. Fossa is a pretty nice draw, but I'm going to, against Dredge, uh, play my creatures out first. Crack in with Silvergill for three, and uh, let's see if the opponent can do something on their turn. All right, looks like we... Well, what are they doing here? Okay, so get, just getting Conflagrate into the graveyard. Seems reasonable. So um, here I'm going to adapt with Ben. Um, that way it's, it's a two-turn clock. Instead of swinging for seven, we're going to swing for eight. And potentially just pitch one of these lands. So get rid of the island. Unfortunately, I drew into, or I looted into an, an island with Benthic Biomancer instead of something else like another Force of Negation. Play that waterlogged grove, which I'll be able to cycle. Crack in for eight, two turn clock, as I mentioned. And if the opponent rips another land, uh, they're going to have access to conflagrate, which, oh, and so they did. How many cards are they going to throw away? Uh, looks like they threw away four, uh, including Life from the Loam, which is going to get their dredges going. Um, they went, rather than two to the Lord and one to Silvergill and one to my face, they went with two to Silvergill. Again, potentially revealing a bit of, um, uh, I don't know, ignorance on the opponent's uh, side about you know how to interact with damage with Merfolk. Um, not the best play. I don't know what that the one damage to my face would have been a bit, uh, made a big difference, but not the best play. At that point, I cycled the Waterlog Grove. Um, I could have drawn into a Force of Negation, which would have countered the Conflagrate and just uh, won the game immediately since I had eight power on board. Uh, but as things went, I drew into another land, kind of flooding out, but you can see how the Waterlog Groves mitigate that a bit. Two of my creatures down. Uh, Benthic Biomancer are on the table, Thassa in hand. Dredge can be extremely explosive, so I was very, very happy to draw Master of Waves as a way to present some explosive... Uh, power on my side of the board. Swing in with Benthic Biomancer. Hope that the opponent kind of whiffs a little bit on their dredge. And I think they just scooped at that point. Uh, it's possible they had no outs. They know their deck better than I do. Uh, they could have possibly hit, let's see, if they dredge three, they could have hit triple Creeping Chill, which would have put them up to 15. <laughs> would have been pretty good. Actually would have taken me down to 11. 
Uh, but yeah, they were pretty far behind. They didn't have another land to trigger uh, Bloodgast. I guess they could have. Yeah, they could have cast Life in the Loam, gotten back land, got Bloodgast back. Um, but they're so far behind. I guess that they chose. Uh, they just chose to scoop it up before even drawing there. So very happy to take game one against Dredge. Uh, it's a kind of deck where you don't expect to win game one most of the time since they're so explosive you hope to win games two and three with your graveyard hate and so now i'm going to have two chances at doing that um so let's go ahead and see how game two went and check out the sideboard strategy all right back for game two uh, let's have a quick look at the sideboard uh so again benthic biomancer um coming out we we just have to hold up mana for relic a lot and for counter magic and playing our creatures so we're not going to be able to loot with his ability um Still, he's the correct one drop to have um, in the deck. Um, most games, um, I don't want to say most games, but many, many games go long, and Benthic Biomancer in those cases is basically like another Silver Gill, which you all know is arguably the best card in the deck. One of the, certainly one of the best cards in the deck. Uh, so I took out four Benthic Biomancers, took out one Thassa because she's pretty slow, um, and I trim a land on the draw, and I chose to trim a Waterlog Grove, uh, just because, again, such an explosive deck like Dredge, um, I would rather not hit my life total early in the game with Waterlog Grove. So let's count it up. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six cards out. Um, I would have brought in the two Echoing Truths, two more Relic of Progenitus for a total of four in the deck post sideboard, and then two Graft Digger's Cages. So six pieces of Graveyard Hate. Um, and two Echoing Truths. Opponent's going to be on the play this time. So this is an extremely fair Merfolk hand. Uh, and I think it's just incorrect to mulligan these. We've got redraws with waterlogged groves. And I chose to keep, even though the opponent also chose to keep, which should have told me that potentially I should have mulliganed uh, to, to Graveyard Hate. But we even have Aether Vial here, so... So I think it would just be incorrect to mulligan this. You guys can leave your thoughts down below in the comments. Uh, it's definitely something to think about against Dredge. Like if they keep seven on the play, should we mulligan a good hand away to find graveyard hate like Graft Digger's Cage or Relic of Progenitus? Let me know your thoughts. But I did keep. And the opponent opens with a tap stomping ground. So not their most explosive uh, opening. I drew a pretty slow card with a second Master of Waves, but if we can get to a turn where we can get both of those guys out, that's that's very obviously a, a path to victory. So let's get Aether Vial down and see what the opponent's working with on turn two. Nature's Claim, I gain four life. Uh, they play a tapped Blood Crypt. So this is an interactive kind of slow keep for the opponent. Uh, as a dredge player, I would expect them to mulligan to sort of explosive hands, but this looks like it's definitely on the slower side. Since I have no creatures to worry about, I'm going to get the Lord out now um, and hold up Trickster on turn three. All right, so whether they drew this right now or not, they decided to go for the Cathartic Reunion on turn three, um, pitching a Stinkweed Imp, uh, getting their dredge game going. And this is where they get really explosive. Okay, so they play a land, but fortunately for me, they didn't get uh, any of their prize amalgams onto the battlefield that turn. Um, if they had hit a blood gas in all of that dredging, uh, they would have gotten all of these guys onto the battlefield. Another trickster is decent interaction. Um, so I started to actually feel like I had a decent shot here. Uh, at 24 life, after the opponent nature claimed my ether vial, they haven't uh, touched me yet, so... Opponent untaps for their turn four, and they, they dredge double Creeping Chill, which sort of changes the math right away. Opponent's going to go up to 24, and I'm going to go down to 18. Uh, so they, um, I guess that they dredged a, um, they dredged a Blood Gas, played a land, and now all three Amalgams are coming into play. So let's see, they, they cast Life from the Loam, get a bunch of lands. We can see that there's a Conflagrate in the yard. Uh, the opponent could go for Conflagrate right now, but they choose to hold on to it. They're going to get all their Amalgams onto the table, and looks like they might have nothing else to do with their mana. So I'm going to go ahead and flash in one of these Tricksters right now. We want to get Maximum Devotion for Master of Waves. Let's go to, let's go to combat first, uh, do some damage. They go from 24 down to 19. 
and then we're going to play this Master of Waves. Now, of course, they have the Conflagrate in the, in the graveyard, which means that they can deal with all or most of these uh, tokens as well as the Lord. Um, if they get rid of both of these Merfolk here, uh, it's four. They're going to have... They're going to have a lot of cards in hand between Life and the Loam. Getting them a bunch of lands. See, so they dredge, and looks like they're going to go for probably Loam first. Or maybe just Conflagrate first. Okay, so they, they got rid of the Lord, uh, and they got rid of all five elementals. So that was uh, for seven, leaving one card in their hand. Uh, they're going to crack in here for 11. And... I cannot choose uh, to block with Master here because he's been a huge uh, investment in mana. Now, Echoing Truth was an interesting draw, but with the opponent's life total so high and only four power on the board, even bouncing these prize amalgams um, with five life left, I couldn't really hope to put up a good fight that way. So unfortunately, um, I had to tap all of my lands to cast the second Master Voice, but as with last turn, I'm going to go ahead and get in for four. This Master of Waves is going to bring four uh, three twos. Puts up a nice defense against their attacks, but it does put me within uh, striking distance of a dredged uh, Creeping Chill, or in fact, uh, within distance of a Creeping Chill from hand. So pretty precarious. Uh, we're going to have to block here, and then we're, we're still left with only six power, play a Lord, goes up to nine power. Um, now imagine they didn't hit that double creeping chill uh, before. They would be at nine, and I would be at uh, nine. <laughs> so I guess. Oh no, is it? What's if if they didn't gain six life? God, I'm sorry. Uh, they would be at eight, and I would be at nine. So um, would still be lethal uh, attack, but I have blockers. Um, these uh, creeping chill. It's definitely a pretty amazing addition to Dredge, and it's one of my least favorite cards in Magic because Dredge was already a, a strong deck, and it just rewards them so much for just doing what they do, right? I mean, every time they Dredge, they have a chance to hit free Lightning Helixes, and I don't know, that just seems kind of unfair and stupid. So um, they went to Dredge, and they hit a Creeping Chill. So um, even though I got to play both of my Master of Waves, they got triple Creeping Chill in basically the, the first half of their deck. And I couldn't compete against that. Now, that was a situation where um, the life loss from, from um, Waterlogged Grove potentially made the difference. Um, they could have, I guess, played out a Stinkweed Imp or something there. But if they got in for a big attack, um, I could potentially bounce uh, any other blockers with Echoing Truth, play a Lord... Just deal a bunch of damage of my own. I put up a good fight, but um, sometimes it's really, really hard uh, to battle through those creeping chills. So a close, uh, unfortunate game two. Let's go to game three and see how uh, this league ends up. Okay, uh, back for game three of round five, sitting at four and zero, going for five and zero on the play. Let's get it done. So once again. A very nice, normal Merfolk hand. Uh, this time we're on the play, uh, and I chose to keep. I can't ship these hands. Uh, we have no uh, knowledge of whether the opponent has a solid hand or not when we make our decision, and we have to trust our deck. You know, we can't we can't be afraid of what these broken decks might do. Now, against a slightly different deck like maybe Neoform, uh, that's that can just go off on turn one. In those cases, I might try to mulligan to Force of Negation just because it's so utterly backbreaking. Like they waste four or five cards trying to go off and then we counter their spell. But against Dredge, you know, we just saw the opponent keep an opening hand where they did nothing until turn three except kill our Aether Vial. Um, so I'm going to keep this hand. Opponent kept seven. We're on the play. We're going to get to uh, get some creatures on the board pretty soon. Stomping Grounds untapped for Faithless Looting, so it's looking like one of those broken dredge starts. Making me a little bit um, worried that keeping this hand wasn't the right uh, choice, but they didn't pitch any dredge spells. So I guess the opponent kept a hand with Faithless Looting, um, hoping to draw into two dredge spells, or at least one, and then discard them. But looks like they didn't hit any of them. So I drew a Waterlogged Grove. Um, 
I had stuff to work with, so it really didn't matter what I drew there too much. I guess interaction, like a force of negation, would have been excellent. But uh, Silvergill draws into a lord, and that's sort of fine by me. Opponent plays a mountain, gets two blood ghasts back, and sort of as as with against um, Hogak Vine, um, this kind of two one vampire zombie stuff doesn't really uh, doesn't really scare us. Now Ether Vial was a pretty cool draw there because on turn three, as you guys know, we often don't have very much to do with that extra mana, so um, I can go ahead and play Ether Vial this turn. But for now, I'm just going to play a Lord and try to push some damage. Let's let's hit with this Silver Gill Adept, see if the opponent has anything to do. Well, they pitch a prized amalgam with Lightning Axe. That's still not a dredge spell. So, uh, yeah, we lose a Lord, but we still deal two damage to the opponent, and we'll get to follow up with the Aether Vial. Okay, so, I mean, it's becoming clear why the opponent kept this hand. It, it was a very reactive hand. Um, they had the Nature's Claim as hate against potential hate uh, from, from my side. Uh, it's an interesting back and forth game um, when keeping opening hands against graveyard decks like Dredge. We bring in artifacts that stop the graveyard. They bring in nature's claims to blow up our artifacts. So they're um, incentivized to keep hands with this kind of interaction because the artifacts can shut down their strategy so hard. So it's actually it can be potentially to our benefit if they keep a hand like this that doesn't have a lot of action but has ways to stop our hate. Um, and I think that's what we're seeing playing out here. I go up to 24, uh, which makes their blood gas look a little extra silly, and pass the turn. Bloodstained Mire getting cracked, and I think we're going to see the opponent f uh, flashback Faithless Looting. They get two more draws, hoping to hit those uh, those dredge spells, and it looks like once again they failed to draw into any, <laughs> any dredge spells. So they've now gone through uh, a quarter of their deck without hitting any dredgers. Good for me, pretty bad for the opponent. They go down, sorry, I go down to 20. Spreading Seas is a very interesting draw there because even if they top deck, um, you know, Life from the Loam, they won't be able to, to get it into the graveyard easily uh, by casting it. So, uh, but it doesn't look like it's time yet to cast Spreading Seas. They, um, they don't, their creatures can't block. And I've still got creatures to deploy, and we just want to win this game. We want to get that 5 0, so. Uh, go ahead and play Waterlog Grove, get this Lord down. No more mana up from the opponent, so let's knock him down to 12. We've got 5 on board. We're going to flash in 2 more uh, during their turn, which means we've got at least 8 coming next turn. They might shock themselves. Okay, so they go Cathartic Reunion, but um, the card... Uh, less good when you don't have uh, Dredgers. So they've discarded two lands, and now they get to draw three, but they just have to draw three straight off the top. Uh, they play a tapped Copperline Gorge, which gets back a Bloodgast and a Prized Amalgam on the end step. Now, I could have flashed in my Trickster um, after they attacked and eaten one of the Bloodgasts, but I'm going to tap one down, and if they still want to attack, then I'll eat a Bloodgast. So this is always a good spot. Um against Dredge when they decide not to attack with a Bloodgast even though they can't block. Um, usually means they're getting pretty intimidated, pretty flustered. So there's that prized amalgam coming in. Um, I drew a pretty pointless Aether Vial. Again, Bloodgast can't block, so I'll go ahead and start off with Spreading Seas on that Stomping Ground. It resolves, so now I don't even have to be afraid of anything like a, a Lightning Axe or anything like that. Another Waterlogged Grove. Um, yeah, we're probably just going to cast Trickster on the opponent's turn. Crack in for 8, putting the opponent down to 4. Uh, they've only got 9 on the crackback, and still no dredge spells in the graveyard. So um, the opponent's probably feeling pretty bad about keeping this hand at this point. But again, it's it's an interesting back and forth. If I had um, if I had kept a hand, like a slow hand with a Graft Digger's Cage, uh, they would have had the answer for it with Nature's Claim, and they probably would have been in a pretty good spot, and I would have had a, like, you know, a slowly developing hand. I think the opponent here is frust uh, expressing his frustration with whiffing on a third of his deck for uh, dredge creatures. Or dredge cards, I should say. Life from the Loam isn't a creature. So I'm going to flash in the Trickster, tap down the Amalgam. Um, if they attack with all the Blood Gas, I'm just going to block one of them. I mean, they could have Dark Blast, but um, seems unlikely at this point. They don't even have Black Mana. 
they would have gotten the Dark Blast in the graveyard by now to start uh, dredging. So block one of the Blood Gas. I still got lethal even if they deal with this Merfolk Trickster. Um, eat one of the Blood Gas. Opponent hits me for four. Plays a stab tomping, a tapped Stomping Ground to get back uh, that Blood Gas. Very comfortable life total. Um, I've got two redraws with waterlogged groves. But I think at this point, doesn't look like the game is progressing any further. Uh, the opponent just scooped it up. So I was pretty ecstatic. I haven't gone 5-0 um, in, in, in a little while with Merfolk, and uh, especially to do it with, with all these new Modern Horizons cards that we're testing right now. Uh, I was extremely happy. So thanks for uh, you know coming along with me on these replays. I really appreciate you guys uh, tuning into the channel. Uh, let me know your thoughts on how the cards feel to you. I know a lot of you guys are also testing Force of Negation and uh, Waterlog Grove, maybe Fiery Islet. Maybe some of you guys are testing other cards. I know some of us were talking about Archmage's Charm. Unfortunately, since it costs three blue, that would probably mean trimming back substantially, if not just cutting all of our Muta Vaults. And Muta Vault is really one of the big pluses of running mono blue Merfolk. Um, it's one of the reasons I don't really love running blue-green Merfolk is uh, Mutavault just lets you get so much more done in, in, in games that go longer. Even if your opponent wipes your board, you get to activate two Mutavaults, kill their Planeswalker, you know, whatever whatever it does. It's helping us uh, deal damage. And as with Waterlog Groves, we love to have our land do other things. We saw earlier in one of the matches, uh, I actually filtered um, Mutavault mana with Oboro, I think pretty much every card in the deck did work in this league. Uh, we saw Echoing Truth, Bouncing Things. Uh, we saw Deprive, Countering Murderous Red Cap, which would have killed our Phyrexian Revoker. We saw Phyrexian Revoker just keep a Devoted Druid combo offline. Um, Dismember killed uh, Plague Engineer. Uh, just all of our cards. Main deck, Master of Waves, Thassa helped us win with Unblockable. Uh, Trickster just always getting value by tapping down the opponent's creatures, adding devotion to the board. Um, it was really a team effort. Uh, it just is rewarding when all of your card choices um, affect the outcome in such a positive way. So again, leave your comments down below. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Uh, please check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support the channel. These videos do take a good amount of time to make, and um, I really appreciate all of you patrons. And yeah, keep tuning in. I'm sure I'll have more gameplay videos uh, to come in the near future. And uh, I'll see you guys there. Thanks again. Bye.